Hello, my friends. So today we're solving Hot Cakes by Philip Newman, which is the gas puzzle originally posted on February 22nd, 2024. So we have standard Sudoku rules. So the digits one through nine should be placed once each in each row, each column, and each outlined three by three region. We also have thermo as one variant in this puzzle. And so thermo says that along each of these thermometer shapes, the digits have to increase starting at the larger round bulb end. Generally, in thermometer Sudoku, there's no requirement that you increase consecutively. So for instance, if this was just a normal thermo, we could place two, seven, nine in that order along that thermo, and that would be fine because they increase. But Philip has combined this with another Sudoku variant called consecutive pairs, where we have these white dots that tell us that digits on either side have to be in a consecutive relationship. One has to be one greater than the other. So in fact, because most of these thermos have dots along their entire length, we, um, we can tell that the digits, in fact, have to increase consecutively. The only exception is the very end of this thermo and the very beginning of this one. But other than that, all of our thermos are going to increase consecutively. So let's start with these because we already have some digits placed. This will have to be 2, 3, 4 increasing consecutively, and this will have to be 6, 7, 8. Now that points to something kind of interesting to look at next, because now we have all four of our lowest digits seeing the bulb of this thermometer. So the absolute smallest this could possibly be would be five, and because the thermometer is length three, the biggest it could be a seven. So it's either five, six, or seven. Now we already have a six and a seven in this row, which makes that five. Similarly, the end of this thermometer can't be six, seven, eight, or nine, so the biggest it can be is five. Because it's a length 3 thermometer, the smallest it could be is 3. But it can't be 3 or 4 because there's a 3 and 4 in the row. So that's a 5, a 4, and a 3. And our remaining digits in this column are going to be 1, 2, and 6 in some unknown configuration. And in this column, we're going to have 4, 8, and 9. And similarly, we cannot figure those out just yet. The next place I looked is was at these 3s in the top 3 rows. So I have two 3s here. And now that rolls three out of all of these cells. I also can't put a three here because then the digit next to it would have to be a two, which breaks this. So I need to place a three either here or here. But if there was a three here to increase consecutively along this thermometer, this would have to be a four, which breaks. Therefore, this is also not my three, so I'm going to place a three here. And I have a symmetrical deduction at the bottom with these sevens. These two sevens see all of these cells. This can't be a seven because this would be seven, eight, nine, which is broken. And I can't put a seven here because it would need a six next to it, which breaks with this six. So this is my seven. Now let's take a look at some of these um, longer thermometers. So we have these length four thermos because these are starting to become pretty limited. So what are we going to start these with? So we can't start this one with a two or three because those are already in the box. And we also can't start with a one because then we would need to put a second two in the box. So the smallest digit we could start it with would be a four. So that's either four, five, or six, five, six, seven, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine. We can eliminate seven there because there's a seven in this column. So if that's not seven, that's not six, that's not five, and that is not four. This is joined up to this thermometer, so let's consider the relationship between these. So what can we possibly put along this thermometer? This one can't start with one, two, or three, so it has to start with four, five, six, or seven, meaning this has to be five, six, seven, or eight. So this, even though these don't have to be consecutive, definitely has to be bigger than five in order to be bigger than this cell. So this is six, seven, eight, or nine but it has to be consecutive with this five or six. So eight and nine are too big to make those consecutive, so we can eliminate those, meaning that this can't be seven or eight, and this can't be six or seven. And now this seven comes into play and tells us that this is definitely a six, so this is definitely a five and four. And funny enough, these did turn out to be consecutive, even though we didn't use the fact that they would be consecutive to solve. So this six makes this a five, six, seven, and eight. Let's see if we can do something similar down here with this um, symmetrical construction. So this, similarly to the above, cannot be 7, 8, or 9. The reason it can't be 9, again, is because we would end up with two 8s in the region, and this would be an 8, which is too high to be on the bulb. So this is at most 6. It's 4, 5, or 6. Okay, so those are our options for this. This can't be a 3. Now if we compare this to this thermometer, 
That means that what we put here has to be something like 3, 4, 5, or 6. The absolute lowest it could possibly be would be a 3. So this has to be greater than 3. It's 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8. We can eliminate 7. We can also eliminate 8 because an 8 would make the final cell a 9. So that's not an 8. So that's now a 5, 6, or 7 to be both consecutive and greater. The 7 eliminates 7 here, which eliminates 6 here. And now this definitely has to be smaller than 5, so it is either 3 or 4. And I believe we should have, yep, we have a 3 in this column, just like we had a 7 over here, which makes that 4, 5, 6. And again, these just kind of coincidentally turn out to be consecutive, even though Philip did not tell us that because he's being very cheeky. So now 4 and 5 are consecutive. That fills this in. Now we get these two digits because we have a 6 placed there, which gives us a 2. This 6 gives us a 1, and then we have a 6. And now this 4 makes this an 8, which makes this a 9, and makes this a 4. Let's consider our last thermos now. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in the row. So this one has to start with 6 or 7, then go up to 7 or 8, and then finally go up to 8 or 9. Symmetrically, this starts with 1 or 2, goes up to 2 or 3, and then 3 or 4. Now we can't place a 6 here at all, and there's only one option for 6 along the thermometer, so 6 must go there, which because of the consecutive rule makes that 6, 7, 8, and we can now place our 9. Over here, we can't place a 4 because there's already a 4 in this region. So the only place we can put a 4 is on the very end of our thermometer, and because of the consecutive rule, that's now 2, 3, 4. Now these are going to be 2, 3, and 9. These are going to be 1, 7, and 8. And we already have a 2 and 3 in this column, so that's now a 9. And we already have a 7 and 8 in this column, so that's going to be a 1. Now our other regions where we only have three digits remaining, we have one here, which needs a 5, 8, and 9. 5 can only go in one position. Now, now um, 9 can only go in one position because of the 9 here. And now we're going to place our 8 as our last digit in that region. Here we're going to need a 1, 2, and 5. The 5 cannot go in those positions, so it goes there. 1 can't go here, so it goes there. And then there is our 2. The 8 will give us a 7 and an 8. The, one, or the 2 here will give us a 3 and a 2. And now we can finish this row, which is a 9. And we can finish this row with a 1. Now we need a 7 and 9 here, which we can place by Sudoku. We need a 1 and a 3 here, which we can place by Sudoku. These columns are nearly complete, so let's finish those up. So this one needs a 2 and a 3. And this one needs a 7 and an 8. This column is almost done. It still needs a 1 and a 6. And this column still needs a 4 and a 9. Here we still need a 1 and a 4. Here we still need a 6 and a... What's the last digit there? 6 and a 9. I, I do sometimes stumble on these, um, kind of identifying the last digit. I've gotten a lot more consistent with it with a lot of time and practice. But I definitely still have moments of just spending a solid 15 seconds just staring at a row or column, wondering what is missing, convinced that every digit is there already. Anyways, in this column we still need a 2, and then our last digit will be an 8. Not my actual time, because I did try this a couple of times before I felt like I was ready to walk through it with you guys. Um, but hopefully you found that helpful. That one was beautifully symmetrical. I really enjoyed it. And I hope you did as well. Happy solving, and have an awesome rest of your day.